<laughs> no, Mr. And I said, no, I'm not going to do it. Uh, it's not very long, but I think it's not too interesting for you. Interesting for you. Uh, but I want to give you a short, I, I didn't plan it, but I think it's important, and I'm not going to repeat it in the following years, but to give you a short insight of how our um, organization is structured. Because uh, if somebody asks me for a signature, then I say, well, I need two weeks for that. Uh, and on the other end, we, I say we are, we are so small, it's, uh, it's uh, both true. Um, so, uh, I want to give you a short insight of what belongs to the organization itself. Caritas Vienna is uh, one Caritas organization of nine Caritas organizations in Austria. But uh, it's quite big. So, we have almost 5,000 employees, have uh, 2,000 registered volunteers, and like 15,000 volunteers which we, don't, which we don't have a contract with. This is big and that's the reason and uh, in addition to that uh, the, the director of Caritas Vienna in the moment is also director of the um, um, of the organization Caritas Austria which is an additional tenth organization. So uh, uh, I see him like four times a year, something like this. And if I need a signature, I have to call several people to where in the world is he at the moment. Like this. Um, and in this huge organization, um, there are like uh, around 20 people who are happy to, are privileged to deal with art and especially community art. And um, three years ago, I I showed here um, a video of the place I was working for before, and uh, some of them, some of you remember. Um, I'm showing this is Brunnen, was Brunnen Passage, and uh, Brunnen Passage was kind of the uh, the partner of the foundation in the beginning. Um, now I um, I'm about to build, or we are about to build up a new place, a new project. And I've taken certain duties and cooperation partners with me. Um, and there's a third project uh, within um, Caritas, um, which, hello, which is Tanzanolans. And you can ignore the date, uh, but they are dealing um, only with dance. Uh, they have, uh, there you can actually see Brunnen Passage, so the space, the big venue I, I worked for before. Uh, they have a bit different target groups, they also work with elder people uh, and, uh, and with uh, people with disabilities. Uh, disabilities? Hmm? Disabilities, we say with. Uh, Special needs. Special needs. Okay. Other abilities yeah. in Spanish. Other abilities. Also yeah. nice. Yeah. So, uh, and you can see this place. Some of you have been there. Uh, it's a big venue. We have uh, not only these dance workshops there. We have all kinds of events. We have theaters. We have um, performances and stuff there. So this is. Uh, I don't want to show you the whole video. Uh, and this is uh, another. This is Brunnen Passage, Tanz de Toleranz, and uh, we are kind of the, um, the third project. And all these three projects, are, um, which is also quite unique, we are brands. So we don't put uh, the characters logo on everything, we put our own name. And some of our partners don't really know that we belong to characters. Why is that? It's uh, because we, uh, we have to focus on art and we should, uh, the idea is that we also, um, uh, in certain, um, <coughs> that we are, we are taken artistically serious from art institutions and therefore it's not helpful to, to use uh, characters all the time. Um, yes, okay, I skip that. Um, here. Here I show you um, 
uh, this our new surrounding. Uh, it doesn't look so different than the other one, but of course, this new venue is also at a market site in a valley um, in a district in Vienna, which is uh, very multicultural uh, influenced. Um, and uh, yeah, we actually we face some uh, similar um, challenges there as we did in Brunnen Passage. Um, and uh, what we do there uh, is all kinds of art workshops and it's, uh, um, and it's the idea that we bring art to a place where you don't, um, where you don't expect it uh, is expected. And um, of course from the very beginning we were, um, as you also are, if you are not only uh, um, concentrating on classical music, we are always there a question like what is art? And um, and from the very beginning, we we said, well, we we face this challenge, and we don't. Uh, it's not our idea to to make things easy uh, for people. Here on these pictures, you can see there are a lot of windows. People can all always see what we're doing. We don't have a closed office. Whatever is on my screen, people can stand beside me and look at my screen and watch what we're doing. Um, and. Here, for example, uh, when he was speaking in the glass, we tried. To, we had a, um, a project where we wanted to make a sculpture, which uh, shows the diversity and the, the multilingual situation at the market. And um, of course, recording would be the obvious and uh, easiest way of doing it. But we tried to capture the languages in glasses and made a sculpture out of this which is of course like a weird idea and um, but people are kind of used uh, to us having weird ideas now in the meantime and we um, um, as I already said we don't try to make it simple um, for people um, perhaps you know this approach of um, from, from uh, artistic research, artists who, who work in a scientific um, context, um, they work a lot with questions and that's also what we did in the beginning, that we, um, that we, when we came there we told people we are not interested in any answers, we are interested in the questions and we asked them to give us questions uh, what we have to ask in order to understand the, the place and stuff. And um, uh, that is uh, quite challenging if you have to do with so many different languages and, um, and making uh, yourself understandable in one language is sometimes difficult enough, but if you have many languages it's even more difficult. Therefore I have a team, nobody uh, comes to the team without bringing at least one new additional language in the team. Mm. Um, this is kind of uh, background information. And the project which I want to uh, present to you, um, what I uh, originally wanted to present to you is a classical school project which we kind of started before, before we um, became Muse. Uh, and and but it's kind of still running, and now we label it with Muse um, because we, we started it uh, already with the uh, idea of Muse in our uh, in our head. But Antonio stressed the point that it's not only about school projects, and uh, so I want to show kind of variety of um, of what we're doing. But actually, there's also always uh, the approach what we're doing uh, or the kind of projects we're launching in, in our space has the same background as what we're doing in schools. So um, when an artist comes and um, wants to be part of MUSA or we approach him to be part of MUSA, uh, we look for artists uh, not uh, in the sense of asking them um, have you any experience in teaching or working with kids or something like that. We, uh, our question is like more, what would you like to learn from the kids? 
um, not what you're going to teach them, but what do you think you're going to learn in this project, in this context. And I don't expect um, uh, always a perfect uh, answer for this question, but I, uh, uh, I look for artists who, are, who consider this to be an interesting question and to try to challenge challenge them, uh, challenging themselves in this project. And uh, the project I'm showing you is a project which was quite a challenge for all of us. Uh, the the um, idea was uh, that we um, that we wanted to um, capture the cultural <coughs> diversity or the, actually the diversity in all sense in a musical production. Um, and we, um, the idea was, like everyone should be, uh, should have the chance to be part of it as soon as a, um, um, as a person to have a lot of communication and to get in contact with many people and to. Um, uh, it takes time that the news is spread around in the neighborhood. And um, we want to, to uh, people to see what we're doing, and perhaps then um, develop an interest in being part of it. And I'm going to, yeah, and one more information. <laughs> the composer, he had a kind of a, he did a rough, um, a rough uh, uh, composition, and. Um, and he had some ideas, okay, there will be youngsters rapping, and of course, um, we're going to write a text at a certain point, and it's going to be multilingual, and uh, many things, and it could be nice to have a group of percussionists in there, and so on. And of course, it turned out another way. His task was to involve everyone, and uh, there were instruments uh, coming up, uh, which he didn't use. So it was his task to, to get to know them and to find a place to put it in the uh, composition. And uh, the song is like five minutes or something. And we, we ended up with footage material like days. Yeah? And of course we knew that it would be pure madness. So we uh, registered, registered every audio and the name and uh, this was kind of part of the project and we we uh, um, we had to promise everyone who is doing a recording is going to be part of it in the end some people recorded several instruments uh, and but we said at least with one bit at least with one instrument you're going to be part of it you know um, oh that's the wrong one sorry. <laughs> noise around, it's impossible to do it. And our answer was, that's why we do it, because it's impossible. Uh, this place has like uh, uh, 40 square meters in the front, and we use it for um, as office, as everything. We have a, a little toilet and storage. <laughs> 
we're behind, but we use it for everything. We in, in, in May we're getting new office in some place because we grow. But, uh, in the past two years, we mainly have done everything we did on the market there. And all recordings took place there. As you see in the background, sometimes it's night, sometimes it's day, and sometimes people pass on. Okay. <coughs> She was taking, she was, uh, does it have like, he said, no, it doesn't have to be nice. Please not nice, it has to be like, what, what is it? Like, and while she was taping it on the wall, <coughs> the first people came in to ask, oh, I can't play sass, but I'm gonna. And then we ended up, uh, the sass player, um, and I went to, 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 uh, to a Turkish um, association who gave, um, Lessons in these instruments. And they talk to the teacher, talk to them. They, they don't have to be good and stuff. And, but no reactions. And then uh, well, when they taped it on, uh, on the window, there was um, 
this SAS player who is first in this video, he came in, came in and says, what is it? Sounds interesting. Yeah, of course I'm going to be part of it. And he says, oh, we so are so grateful because we couldn't find any. Um, who have you asked? I've talked to the teacher of this organization, this organization. I said, all my pupils. And he was like, <laughs> we were a party and I saw him in the school. And so he took part in it and he posted it on Facebook. And so we got it. Facebook is also something. We, we didn't use Facebook because we, we wanted to uh, reach a local community. Then we have a Facebook page, but certain things, um, as coordinating the choir, and I, uh, I always have to say, Oscar, um, um, no nice activities you do, but please don't put them on Facebook. Otherwise, otherwise we're going to be run down by um, uh, Austrian ladies over 50 who, who want to be part of this choir. But we we want to we do kind of diversity management within our projects. So every project we find a different channel to, to communicate it through. And um, yeah, so we really limit us in uh, the possibilities of communication, but in the end we not only reach these people, but like we talk to hundreds of people and many people say, yeah, we will be part of it. And in the end they, they didn't, but we're still in contact.